Okay, there. Imagine you're a programmer and your task is to come up with a program which when you run it every time gives you a different random number. How do you do that? How do you program something that ends up achieving that particular task? Because, you know, computers are deterministic machines. You ask your computer to add one with one and it will give you two. But then you ask your computer to come up with something on its own. So step back and think about it. How would you approach that problem of coming up with a program which when you run it every time gives you a random number? How do you manufacture uncertainty in a, a very certain device, in a device that is meant to be extremely certain and as precise as it can be? So I encountered this question when I was on Discord. So I was scrolling through Discord and then someone was speaking about how they wanted to create a program that would do the same, that would create randomness, that would create a random number on its own. At first, I was like, dude, what, what's the need for that? I mean, you have random module which exists, so why do that? But then I started thinking about it. So in Python, as I mentioned right now, you have this module called the random module. You can import the random module in your code and then generate a random number. So that's one of the functions that it serves. But then I started wondering how did the random module achieve that. Soon enough, I ended up at random modules source code at CPython's official GitHub repository. What is CPython, you might say? So basically, while Python was being written, it was being written in C, right? So Officially, C Python is quote unquote a reference programming language, but you can see it as more of the engine behind Python. So when you write Python code, C Python compiles it to Python bytecode. And that bytecode is then converted into machine native code that your machine can understand. So this is why Python is called an interpreted language. So there I saw the source code for random.py. Soon enough, I figured out that of course, I, sh I should have figured it out earlier. The random module, it uses an input that is always unique whenever you run it, and that is time. You see, for Unix machines, the time is measured from 1st January 1970 to the whatever current time is. So basically, however many seconds that have passed from 1st January 1970 to right now are being continuously counted. And this number is usually very big. Like for example, right now as I was writing the script, the number of seconds that have passed from 1st January 1970 Yeah, that's, that's quite a big number. So the random module, it takes that as the input. Because think about it, every time you run your program to ask for a random number, the time would change and you would feed that changed time to, to your algorithm, which will generate a random number. And that is exactly what some of the functions at the random module do. But here is the catch. You cannot use the random module for any cryptographic functions. I mean, you can use it, but it would make the whole process more insecure. And here is why. So first of all, one of the seeds, one of the preferred seeds is time. The thing is, if you want to brute force the seeds, you won't actually need to brute force the Unix time from 1st January 1970, but instead just from the start of the process and the end of the process. Right, you, you have a narrowed space of time that you need to look into. Random module is an implementation of the Mersenne Twister algorithm. The creators weren't really a big fan of it, but they used it. Um, Mersenne Twister isn't that bad, speaking honestly. It's, it's actually a decent PRNG. A PRNG is a pseudo-random number generator. But it has its own set of flaws. You cannot use it in cryptographic functions because of its own set of flaws. The set of flaws being the same seed will give you the same number and the other being if you want a certain number that is certain digits long, it's possible 
that what would end up happening is that in the middle there would come a point where the numbers start repeating the period of repetition itself depends on the seed so because of all of these reasons we don't use the random module for things that need to be more un unpredictable but like for stuff like cryptography where you need to come up with big encryption keys and decryption keys how do you do that bytes are nothing but fancy numbers that your computer could understand that's kind of oversimplifying it a bit so you will often see bytes being used when you deal with uh, generating encryption keys and decryption keys so for that we often use the secrets module now how exactly does the secrets module generate these cryptographically secure pseudo random numbers well it does that by reading off of system entropy and that system entropy is basically the contents of slash dev slash u random so what is slash dev slash u random so in linux you have this device called slash dev slash u random a device is basically a file which is for special purposes and here it's slash dev slash u random but how does slash dev slash u random do that the thing is whenever you move your mouse whenever you use your keyboard whenever a drive is read etc etc all these operations may take a different range of time it really depends on the situation and all of these operations are visible to a kernel the kernel uses these operations to produce entropy also like i didn't tell you this earlier because i didn't want to confuse you but the random module prefers to first get entropy from the entropy by entropy i mean seed here because of course in in this case it's using the mersenne twister and the mersenne twister uses seeds anyways so the random module does prefer to get entropy from slash def slash u random but then why is still it a rule of thumb not use it well it's it's because of the property of mersenne twister repeating digits after a certain point so let's say you use the random module to generate an encryption key if someone knows a part of the encryption key and sees that the digits are repeating you might be able to guess the encryption key so that makes the random module even more insecure for cryptographic purposes and i think we've cracked the code we have understood how exactly computational randomness sucks and my, my favorite part was honestly slash dev slash random that that really astonished me how how we produce somewhat cryptographically secure randomness also like if you think about it all of this is still not randomness it's cryptographically secure pseudo randomness even though it's cryptographically secure it is still pseudo randomness so computers are incapable of producing randomness it is beautiful to me because how do we come up with random numbers we just think something anything we just we just make a random guess which is which does which does not have any factor to start with so such complicated machines cannot replicate the simplest of actions that we do and to replicate it somewhat we have to come up with such complicated algorithms it is really something i, I would like to announce that i i also have a discord community that you can join below to no doubt with me or to give any private constructive criticism if i was wrong anywhere in this video feel free to reach out to me so that i can fix that like i i i went down this rabbit hole thinking about computational randomness and i learned a lot while researching it so the talk by flippo wal sorda i hope i'm i'm pronouncing his name right it it helped me understand how slash def slash u random work and as i said it's it's my favorite part of the video yeah pretty much you can you can probably subscribe if you want and leave a like if you if you like my work see ya